I'm gonna look at the customer list and I wanna talk about a list view. So lists are really important in, in terms of functionality of Business Central and they really help you uh, see data, navigate data, et cetera, within the application. So this is just a list of customers, pretty, pretty basic. First thing I wanna point out is over here on the right, fact boxes. So fact boxes allow me to see additional information about the record I'm on without having to need to open the record, navigate someplace else, run a report, et cetera. So additional information. Remember that uh, the same way we could personalize the role center, I can personalize a fact box. So I've created fact boxes for clients. We've added stuff, we've taken stuff away that's not relevant, but we wanna uh, spend some time during the implementation so that the users have access and visibility to the information that they need to use their, to do their job. So for example, the service section, if you're not using uh, the service modules within Business Central, we take these lines off so that they just don't show zeros, compress everything so that I can see you know, what I need to see uh, uh, on a record. You'll notice as I navigate through the application, these fact boxes are gonna update, so they're always current, they're always live, full drill down capabilities. These teal numbers I can drill in, outstanding orders, I'm gonna have quick access to the orders that are outstanding, okay? Fact boxes are throughout the application. Attachments, I have the ability to do um, document attachments into the database, we can leverage SharePoint if we want to, um, uh, document links, document notes, all that sort of stuff is available. All right, from a list view, what can I do with a list view? First thing to note on a list view is I can personalize this list. So what I wanna do is uh, as an end user, I wanna spend some time, get the fields on here that make sense to me. So if currency is not something you use, fine, take, remove it. If uh, for some reason shipping agent code is very important to you, it's as easy as just um, dragging and dropping that onto my list. And now shipping agent code shows up. And if I wanted to take currency off, I can hide it. And now we're good to go my list now makes sense for me as an end user. From the list, I can I can sort, I can filter, uh, I can do all sorts of things. All right, from a page, I also have the ability to do two things with Excel. First one is edit or um, open in Excel, and the second one is edit in Excel. So open Excel, pretty standard feature, copy the data, paste it in Excel, disconnect the view of my data in Excel. Edit in Excel is a little different though. So what edit in Excel allows me to do is to create a two-way integration between uh, Excel and Business Central. So what you'll notice is the Microsoft Dynamics Office add-in is now enabled inside of Excel. Couple things to note about this. Um, Business Central is a, uh, basically is a three-tiered architected product. So we have a database layer, which is on the back end. We have what we call a, a business service tier in the middle, and then we have a client. I would say that the, and this isn't exactly right, but the client is basically unintelligent. Okay, so um, the business level tier is where I store and where security is housed, where data validation is housed, that sort of thing, okay? What that allows me to do in terms of an arch architecture though is to swap out clients. So we talked about a unified interface with the, between the browser, the tablet app, and the, um, and the phone app, for example, okay? If I deploy an extension into my environment, they're immediately gonna be available on the tablet on the phone. No additional programming needs to be done. They're also available inside of Edit in Excel, okay? The reason for this is I'm updating that business service tier. I'm not actually updating the client in any way, okay? So what can I do when I'm in Excel? Actually, I'm acting just as, uh, as if I was inside of Business Central in terms of a client. I just have a different user interface. So I have the ability to um, create new records. So I'm on the customer list. I can create a new record and publish it back to Business Central, actually do data entry using Excel as a client. Um, publish would also allow me to update. So if I wanted to update uh, terms or customer names, et cetera, I can write that back to um, Business Central. So Excel as a client. Implications of that though is first, it's, it's validated data. So if I go over here to this balance, uh, balance LYC is local currency, uh, what you're gonna notice is that that field is red. So it's a non-editable field. Why? Well, because balance of a customer account is calculated based on the transactions in Business Central. It's not a field that I can just go update in Business Central, I'd have to process a transaction. Hence, I have visibility to that calculated field inside of Excel, but I can't edit it in Excel, okay? So it's automatically uh, grayed out or it's red. Uh, but it's non-editable. The other thing is that this is uh, data is validated. So if we look at Responsibility Center, for example, I have to be able to put a valid Responsibility Center into the into the system. I can't just put Marcus's Responsibility Center and write it back to the database. Okay, so data is validated. Um, and it's also using the same security model. So if I don't have access to update or create customers, I can't bypass the security model by using Excel to do that interaction. Okay, so Excel acting as a client, 
creating updating records. Used edit in Excel to do data conversion. Um, I think every one of my clients has, that has inventory items uses edit in Excel extensively in terms of creating items, that sort of thing. Um, you actually can create transactions using edit in Excel. So I had a client that used it to create journal entries, for example. So two-way integration, <clears throat> fully validated um, data security-wise using Excel uh, as a client.